So I'm walking to the car and uh, my guy, um, Adam Cordaggi, who works for the Major, Major League Baseball now, I was just like, right before I got in the car, I was like, beyond the field. Like, that's mm. it. We're taking care of him beyond the field. And like, we both kind of came up to it and like, yeah, beyond the field. Like, so I hashtagged it, kind of ran with it. Um, and that's just, that's what I've been doing, beyond the field. Cause it's, I think it's the, it's the greatest explanation to someone if I say, hey, we have the Beyond the Field program. And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and you all know, all the ballers out there listening, the focus of this podcast is stories, strategies, and success to ultimately help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And man, I've, I've been chasing them down. I've been chasing them down. We've been going back and forth. We've been playing Doug Doug Goose. And man, I, I finally get the opportunity to have my man, Ed Jones, on. He's, he's the director of, of player development. At, at the University of Can at Kansas University. Ed, how, how we doing today, Coach? Uh, doing well. Uh, you have been chasing. Uh, finally, I'm glad we had us. I ran into, I finally have been running, got to a dead end. So uh, we have bye week, so I'm excited, excited to be here with you. Good deal, man. Good deal. Man, Ed, so, I mean, I know I just gave just the the overall title, but, man, I, I, I just want give, to give you a chance and, and kick it over to you, man, and, and just – you know, just, just share with the people out there, like, like just a little snippet about you and uh, yeah, just give a, a, a brief snippet about yourself. Yeah, so my name is Ed Jones or Edward Jones II. I'm from Missouri City, Texas, most city for those who are familiar with Houston and Southwest of Houston. Um, grew up there my entire life. Um, went to University of Houston for undergrad. Um, I am, I had opportunity to be a student athlete at small universities, but I was really interested in, and in, um, working in sports and University of Houston had an amazing sports administration program. They still do. Um, and so I went to University of Houston. I was like, look, I'm going to try out for the football team and if it doesn't work out. At least I know I'm here. I can be uh, studying what I want to study. Went to try out. It did not work out. There is something about a six foot four D lineman that is more attractive than a six foot one defensive lineman. So <laughs> now that I'm on this side, I understand it a lot better. Um, but um, was able to, you know, get some great internships in the city of Houston, do some, meet some great people. Was high school coach for six years in the city of Houston. Then I was um, honored to be hired back to my alma mater, the University of Houston, as the director of player development and high school relations. I didn't know what that meant at all, but kind of figured it out. And now I'm here in season five of season five of college football. Man, man. Ed, so for the people out there who, who don't know, can, can you just break down what, what, what does somebody in player development do? Or, or well, first, I'll ask you about player development and high school relations. Like, like what does an individual with that title do? So when I first got it, I, I didn't know what player, player. I was told you were young, um, the players, you were like the players. Um, they are, you know, you know, honestly, keep it 100. Like you're a young black man who's influential, mm. and we want you around our players. So I was – Okay. And so I was there to just kind of be their person outside, you know, that they could relate to that had nothing to do with the game of football in a sense. Um, and in high school relations, I was sitting there um, taking care of the liaison to all our high school um, in the state of Texas, which is huge. Um, recruiting in the state of Texas is huge. You cannot, the relationships between the Texas University and high school university, and the relationship between a Texas university, especially football and high school football coaches, is one that you cannot mess up. So I was mm -hmm. responsible for creating clinics, reaching out to coaches, getting coaches to practice. I mean, we, one year we 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 got coaches from Nevada, Pennsylvania, Mexico, Iowa. Like it was wow. it was crazy. We had coaches from everywhere um, come visit, and then kind of transitioned our director of high school relations. And ever since I've been, I did one year in recruiting. Forgot to say that, which is which is fun. Um, but I'm good recruiting on it. unless I have to. Um, I'm good. Um, and then now just in the player development role where the role, I, I kind of formed it or evolved it from what I started with, where it was just like, hey, take mm -hmm. care of new community service to where it's, you know, we have a full program called Beyond the Field where we focus on personal wellness, community impact, and 
career development and other things to help these young men create generational impact. Mm. Yeah, I saw on I saw on your Twitter page the other day that you showed a young man how you 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 assisted a young man in in, in, in getting his tie done, and I, I, yeah. I saw you know you like you all just like celebrating that and just just taking that moment. So I so I want you just to talk a little bit about that and and, and just going back to the generational generational impact because I mean I like I know that like that's your hashtag. I see you use it all the time. So can can you just talk a little bit more about that because I know I know that's that's big for you. Yeah, it's it's supremely big uh, for me. Just I'm a big believer in impact and that, you know, this life I live, if the only thing people say, you know, when I'm 120 years old and I pass away, uh, like if the only thing they say about me is, like, oh, yeah, he was a part of this championship program or he was a part of this, you know, organization or he whatever, and it's not the people, like he impacted this person. I'd rather have a whole bunch of people come up that I don't even know and be like, yeah, because Ed Jones, did, I've heard of Ed Jones, I've never met him, but if he did this, this person is able to do this for me. So just trying to get that with our players to just create a ripple effect of positivity. I think um, we can see how negativity, I mean, you wake up and all you got to do is open up Twitter and there's something negative. Um, but creating an impact um, in, in so many phases to impact those around you, um, those who look up to you and those who don't know you. Um, generational impact is huge. Part of it, big, the big reason I came up with generational impact is Donald Miller has a book that I'm reading right now called building a, a story brand. Um, and he talks about one-liners and he always talks about give a problem, give your solution and the result of your solution. So the result of the solution for myself is generational impact for what we do. Um, and so that, that's, that's huge. I, the way I was raised is we, we don't live our lives just for ourselves. In a sense, it's, it's always great to impact others. Man, I, I think, I think that's something huge. You, I think that's something huge you hit on. Uh, because even, I mean, a student athlete out there, a GA, or even, you know, a young yeah. professional, like if, if they just follow that blueprint that you just laid out, you know, finding a way to, you know, identify the, the problem, the solution, and then tying like a one liner all in there. I think that'll set somebody up for some, for, for some success. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna have to jump yeah, in. It's, it's a video. Uh, you can YouTube Donald Miller one liner exercise is awesome. I forgot to bring up the, uh, the um, story of the tie. So, Young man was in my office, um, and we were getting something done. And he saw, like, I had a tie. I kind of keep stuff in my office just for a different occasions. And he just asked me, hey, Coach, can you teach me how to tie a tie? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And so he learned pretty quickly. It took me um, – I learned mine from a pressure situation. Um, I didn't want somebody to teach me how to tie my tie, and I had 20 minutes to figure it out myself, so I figured it out. <laughs> uh, but um, – uh, he learned and then who knows like it, that thing kind of blew up more than I thought it would but then now he can you know we're thinking about doing some different things as far as like social media like different ties or teaching people at school like he does that and he goes to elementary school and teaches one person that's generational impact mm. like, no matter that one person you have you have in, you have impacted another generation um, and so that's kind of where that comes from well I think I mean I think that's really special because one I, I like I know for a fact, he'll never forget that. He'll never forget that moment going back to, you know, when, when, when he was in the office with Coach Jones and Coach Jones was the first person to teach me how to tie a tie. But then just like you're saying of, of thinking about, uh, you know, just doing some cool stuff with social media. I mean, I think that would be amazing because I know I was a part of, I was volunteering one time at an elementary school and that, that was an exercise they had for some of the young men because Coach Jones, you know, like I know that unfortunately uh, more, more times than not, that some 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 of the these young leaders that they, they they may look like us they they may not you know i don't want to generalize but right. the, the there typically isn't a male figure as present as one, one may like uh, I'll, right. I'll, I'll say i'll say it like that or one or well, one thing should be there yeah. mm, there we go yeah. there we go yeah so man just so just just hitting on uh generational impact and and and, and all the all the things you do coach I, I want you to talk about beyond the field because i, yeah. I think that like that was one of the first like I think I saw like your header one time on Twitter, and I was like, "Beyond the field, beyond the field," and I kind of, I kind, kind of spent the podcast name off that a little bit, maybe, you know. But but to, <laughs> talk, talk to us a little bit about about beyond the field. Uh, the big thing for me um, is like so when I when I figured out like player development was where the road I wanted to go, and like that was the big thing. I did not want to be just 
oh, there's our player development guy. He's going to talk about what he does. I wanted to create a program. And so I, I'm a mar- marketing minor, and it's all always be selling. I'll always be closing, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people say always be selling. So I'm used to just selling myself. And a lot of stuff that I learned in my marketing class has helped me, honestly, get to the place where I'm at right now. Um, especially with social media, it's free marketing. It's free. Like it's the people aren't using social media. It's just like I mean I don't come on y'all. Like it's I get it. You know I'm not seeing the people on there all day, <clears throat> which I'm I'm not. I'm probably on there a little more than I think I am. But uh, it's that. So we I, I I created this deal. I had these three steps. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. This is our program. And I was thinking like, well, what can I name it? I want to be catchy. I want to be you know, because we, I was at U of H when we were doing an H-Town takeover, you know, like, I was seeing how social media can, can literally take people, places, and people identify things with that. So I'm walking to the car, and um, my guy, um, Adam Cordaggi, who works for the Major Major League Baseball now, I was just like, right before I got in the car, I was like, beyond the field. Like, that's mm. it. We're taking care of them beyond the field. And, like, we both kind of came up to it and, like, yeah, beyond the field. Like, so I hashtagged it, kind of ran with it, um, and that's just that's what I've been doing beyond the field because I think it's the it's the greatest explanation to someone if I say, hey, we have the beyond the field program. Mm. So now <clears throat> it, it it's two things, right? You don't take away the field. There's no threat to football. There's no threat to oh, you know, I, you're taking away my sport. No, I never said it. I'm taking. I said beyond the field. Mm. Uh, and then you, I, I, you're actively getting them to think about what is beyond the field, like what literally is beyond the field. Um, and so that's kind of how we we sit there with that. And it's uh, I take it to new new levels here soon, um, to where more people will get more exposure to what we're doing. Excellent, man. I I mean, I really love that. Can can you can you talk about a, a few of the components in there? Because I know, uh, yeah. like like just like I told you offline, I'm gonna say it here publicly. But, uh, you know, just just being connected and just seeing some of the other cool things and some of the other cool programs is going on around the country. But you all at KU, man, Ed, y'all, y'all, y'all are really doing a great job, you know, between. And, and of course, I don't know, you know, I don't know everybody on, on, on the staff, but just seeing what y'all were doing with voting with, with, with you and, you know, shout out, shout out to George M and you know, the, the, the crew. Y'all, 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 are, y'all are tearing it up out there. But, but can you just tell a little bit more about um, go, go, going a little bit more in depth about just. Uh, some of the the specifics with, within beyond the field, if you would. Yeah, um, I would like to give a shout out to people. First of all, give a shout out to people here at this campus. We're doing a lot of great things. Uh, one thing I enjoy about being here at Kansas, we have a strong contingent of Black leaders um, who are all for impacting. There's other great leaders also, but I know just speaking for myself and for my guys and what they want to see most of my majority of my guys. Um, you know, there's myself. We have Terry Terry Prince. We have George Majid. There's Paul Pierce. Um, we had a young lady named Michaela. We have a uh, key area. We got, you know, uh, man, we got my man D and EQ. We got Vince, you know, academics. Like we, like we just got Ashley Scott. Like it's, you know, we, it, it's a, for a lot, a lot of our players are going to come from metro areas, uh, specifically mine, where there is a contingent of um, people that look like themselves, um, blacks, or African Americans, whichever uh, people are more comfortable with saying. Um, so first of all, that I, I'm surrounded by some really, like, truly, like, black excellence that kind of holds me. Um, we are all kind of, in a sense, trying to make each other better. You know, like, oh, you, you know, what I'm saying it's like a, a healthy competition. Mm, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A very, very healthy competition, um, and healthy teamwork too. Like overall, um, so it'd be like us being on a team and our practice is being like. Oh, yeah. okay. Like, you know, like, all right, okay. All right, swing, swing it here. I got it. Swing it, swing. Uh, basketball reference. Uh, but um, yeah, so inside the program, uh, there's three phases. There's personal wellness, community impact, and career development. And we really break down the personal wellness piece. It's going to be fi- uh, financial, mental, physical, spiritual, social. And so we want to make sure we take care of all those aspects of the player. Um, the community impact is going to be children in education health and wellness, hunger and homelessness, and then environmental and sustainability. So we have different phases. So if guys don't like being around kids, cool. Like we had some stuff this week where some kids don't, they don't like to read, coach. I ain't trying to read for them kids, you know. Some some elementary kids, man, elementary kids are mean, man. Like, you know, I love them, but they, you know, you slip up on a word, man. I slipped on a word and they had me trying to pull me out on the plank. Um, so we'll do stuff where uh, hunger, where guys can go to a pantry, do things like that. And then we, when we look at the career development piece, it's ex, externships, internships, and career placement. 
And so that's um, the third piece there um, as far as our programming goes. And just once again, trying to find it, what they want to do career-wise, what they love, and just going from there. Mm, yeah, yeah. Coach, talk a little bit more about um, about j j just in regards to, to giving your student athletes a voice, like helping create an environment to where they have a voice um, and, and just why, why that's important. I just think it's I think it's important because for me, we ask so much of them. Uh, any athlete in any sport is given directives, directions, where to be, how to do it, all the time, and that's that's part of the sport. I'm not against that by any means, because that's you know that's what makes people successful. For myself, like I wasn't I was gifted athletically, but I wouldn't get it as much as other people. So I was all cues on whatever was being said. I think that, 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 that the voice part gives them, especially in our situation where, you know, we got guys, you know, most, we got a lot of guys eight, eight, to eight plus hours away from home um, in a situation. And when you have these social injustices or guys want to talk about community, what they want to do in the community, guys want to talk about what they think will be better academically. I mean, we have a great opportunity to give them a voice. Like we gave our guys a voice in, in the aspect of doing player committee. And they just they 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 have done great stuff in the program that we didn't see that we didn't think about. I'm be honest, mm -hmm. like I didn't think about this. And when we went about voting, they were like, "Oh, hey, can we get a voting card?" That kind of just talks about what voting really is. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, "Yeah, y'all know, but they they don't they don't know what voting is, you know." Or you know, we made sample ballots and we had to break down the sample ballot positions. Like what they show me, which is you know, is that they can consume things. It, the breaking down of it doesn't mean that they're less intelligent than other they want a better understanding and so uh we've had opportunity like you know this this month is um national national diabetes awareness month our guys want to do some things you know they were like very passionate like hey coach we want to do some things in national diabetes awareness month so on monday i'll be sending a lot of emails trying to get some stuff done before the end of the month uh for our guys they want to be a part of it and it's, it's one of those deals where um you know it's it's great like hearing them talk career development, you know, hey, coach, can we get business cards? Absolutely. Let's figure out how to get them business cards. You know, what does that look like? Um, and then what's another? Oh, player wellness. One of our players said, coach, we need a team bonding deal. And it, it's been tough because of COVID. We did a team bonding deal and it was amazing. It was so mm -hmm. much fun. Um, now, we were we definitely held on to the COVID um, regulations. Um, but, I mean, it was just like hearing them out. Like, they're, they're a big piece. We can't negate the the part they play in our program outside of what they provide for the program um, because they're going to spend more days with us around us than they will playing the game. So for us, it's 12, you know, games, whatever, basketball, maybe 40, I think. So it's, you know, it's still 300 something, you know, it's the opportunity they're going to be around us, even practices. We don't practice more than the entire year, you know? So having those guys have opportunity to talk about what they would like to do and, you know, there's a level to it, a level of respect and trust that they've got to earn and, and accountability and things like that. But I just think it opens the door for the communication we want to have. Because if we let them communicate off the front end about different things or whatever it may be, then we won't get in that situation where we're saying, well, why didn't that young man let me know? If he felt like this, why didn't he let me know? Because he's never been allowed to communicate. So mm. uh, we need to open up an avenue or the door for what we want to see. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, coach, with you talking about communicating, you know, I, you know, I have to go here because you know, you had, you had, you had the event, you had the thirty for thirty event. Um, what, so, what, where, where did this concept come from? Well, first, first, can you just bring, just for the people out there, can you just share yeah. on and, and just unpack what what thirty for thirty is? We know it was an ESPN special, but can you unpack what, what is thirty for thirty for Coach Ed Jones, and then just talk a little bit about that? Yes, I, need, I need to make sure ESPN doesn't come for me. I do not have enough money to pay for anything. Uh, no, but 30 for 30 for me was a networking challenge for myself. Um, I wanted to meet 30 professionals in 30 days and give them 30 minutes. Um, now, I went to 70 plus professionals in about 24 days or 20 days, something like that. It was incredible. But um, it just grew. I Personally, I like people. I like reaching out. I like getting to meet people. I like writing cards or like keeping up with people and I realized that I had been my, my LinkedIn's I had like 70 messages I had this many messages and DMs on Twitter and I realized I hadn't been reaching out or getting to people getting to know people I had emails I had text messages like hey it'd be great to get with you and I just I hadn't made myself available um and that was more of a um 
because of you know work um transition and things like that but it's like i was like no at the core of me i'm I'm a people person i want to be available i never want i don't care if i'm the the gm or the president or whatever of a sports organization or whatever it may be like i still to me i'm just ed jones like i'm just a guy from most city texas that loves snacks and loves things that are free um <laughs> and so um i just wanted to open that back up and so um it just like one morning I was praying and I was like, man, like, all right, God, like, what, 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 what can I do with these next? We had a 30, 30 day quarantine. I was like, what am I gonna do with these next thirty days? And it's just clear day, thirty for thirty. Like it's just like almost like a flash, you know. And it's like, oh wow. And so I put it out there and I didn't think I was gonna get the response that I got, but like, man, it was just inc- like, like, I still have relationships with people that I'm just like, how is this even possible? Like. You know, thank for, of course, thank God. Um, with that saying, like how, like, and it's just because I opened myself up. Like I had like senior vice president of the Phoenix Suns comment on my deal, like, hey, let's make time, you know, mm. or you know, then I met this person that maybe talking person with the Kings, and then this person in NFL, and then the Falcons, and this person, and this person, and then somebody else did, it, and they were like, oh, they did it, but he was the one who started it, and then it got to a point where I didn't even connect with somebody at at the end of the thirty for thirty. I put out a LinkedIn where I said, man, this is one of the best things I've ever done in my career. Uh, it was amazing. And that person was like, yeah, man, this was awesome. And I was like, I remember thinking to myself, I never talked to this person. So I reached out to him and I was like, hey, let's talk. And I get on the phone and she works for the Charlotte Hornets. She's like, yeah, this 30 for 30 idea was incredible. She was like, yeah, we did it as an entire organization. Like we did it for community service hours because we couldn't get out of the community because of COVID. And so mm. we had our people reach out and like reconnect with students. And I was just like, the whole like I'm thinking like the Charlotte Hornet organization that is owned by Michael Jordan did the 30 for 30 that I just put on LinkedIn and so it was just a great like kind of caught fire um we had the the zoom webinar last night it was you know it, I'm still blown away like by like <laughs> and it's just you know like I just I'm just, once again I'm just a guy from most city that loves snacks and free things and here's this you know the this initiative that I created that kind of just I mean, blew up and it's been great. And it's the coolest part has been literally seeing people um, that I did it with get jobs. And it wasn't mm. because of me by any means, but like literally the co host, Erica, went from a student who was talking about graduation to like mm-hmm. now working at Kentucky as an intern and teaching it to the Kentucky athletic department. Wow. And just seeing her growth and how she handled the zoom webinar last night or i met uh these guys uh Amon boyd or andre bean jeff devon and we were just chopping it up next thing i know they're going to this school and that school and this school and it's just like and just having like i said i didn't have a direct say in that but just having like a small piece to where they met somebody that knew me or they connected with this person that i knew or whatever it may be just kind of creating that that wildfire in the middle of a pandemic I think I'm still kind of blown away by it. I'm thankful, you know, thankful for God for sending it to me because like seeing people grow um, is something that I'm passionate about. And it's like, you know, maybe I created a little generational impact from 30 for 30, but uh, it's kind of crazy saying that, but it, it was, that's kind of what the initiative was. And it's just been like, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm floored because somebody always brings it up, always brings it up. And it's just like, wow. Like people are asking me, can I use it? I'm like, yeah, look, I don't own it. I'm trying my best not to get sued by ESPN. So do whatever you want to do for it uh, with it. Excuse me. Um, but yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I was thinking about just, just, as, just as you were saying that I was thinking about the generational impact from the 30 for 30. And then also even over on the other part with the, with the beyond the field. Cause I know I was in, uh, I, I was in that Instagram live interview that, that you were doing. And, and then you, you were just sharing with the young lady that, you know, that, your, your your time and and the things that you've done you've you've been a part or assisted some 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 young men going going to the pros and 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 then on the other side of that one thing one thing that I really found was interesting was was how you were saying that you never try to deter the young men trying to go pro but at the same time you still make sure that they have what they need as as they facilitate through or as they matriculate through can you talk a little bit about that because the way you put that on that instagram live when you're like you know there, there's there's certain tools that guys need to you know if they go pro or even if they, they go pro in corporate right like can, can you talk a little bit about about that that strategy yeah. that that you said so my big deal is uh 
here at the, at the University of Kansas, you know, we're thankful. I'm thankful to work for a head coach who's had, I think, 40 first-round picks, <laughs> like 120 guys playing the league and drafted. So we're going to talk about the NFL here. Every time he asks about who wants to play in the NFL, I still raise my hand. You know, I still I, I still hold out hope that somebody would take a 34-year-old, uh, overweight, six-foot guy that probably runs a six-flat 40. But uh, maybe, who knows, you know, maybe things happen. But – um, the way we kind of approach it is going back to your point is I'm not going to tell the guys like we're going to we're going to address the, the the stats of the NFL, but I'm not going to tell the kid he's not going to make it. Um, I mean, unless like now if I have a great relationship with him, I'll tell the kid like, look, man, like you either you need to come back or bro, it ain't calling you. Um, so what we do is we attack our teaching through the NFL. So if I want to teach about financial literacy, the NFL has uh, through the uh, NFL PA. Uh, they have uh, it's Willis Wade, Wade, and I can't think of the it's like pipeline to the pros. Yeah, pipeline to the pros deal where they will send a the NFL director of salary salary cap negotiations, and he'll put up the average uh, contract, which would be like a fifth round pick contract, and he'll talk about financial literacy. Mm. So he's talking about budgeting, he's talking about saving, he's talking about spending, he's talking about investments. He's literally hitting everything that we would talk about anyway. So I have the ears and the hearts of our players because it's the NFL giving a financial speech, right? The NFLPA comes in and talks about what players do in the offseason. So like a player come to me like, hey, coach, I say, you know, what, what are you interested in doing? What's your uh, passion as far as career? Man, I want to play in the league. I'm like, all right, sweet, awesome, that's cool. That check's going to end whenever your season ends. So if you're not on a playoff team, that check's going to end in December. If you're on a playoff team, you hope it goes to February. Um, what are you going to do for the next season? I'll start till September. What are you going to do for the next, you know, seven months, you know? I had that wrong. Yeah, seven months. What are you going to do? How are you going to invest? You're making a, a, a massive amount of money. You can build on that. Like one thing, um, I think I had a conversation with somebody. This right now is the most important thing they have while they're playing. Okay. It is awesome to leverage this logo, the Jayhawks, while you are playing. People remember, people will play because, okay, let's say, you know, you're a business owner, right? Um, you're, you know, I come meet you. I want to talk about entrepreneurship, all that. I meet you. You remember me because I met you on a Monday and I'm about to play on Saturday. Mm. It's just, it's a, it's going to happen. You're going to remember me. Oh, that's, you know, if I make a play, I, you know, whatever, you see a video. Hey man, I saw that play you made. It's easier. Mm. I say it won't happen when you're done playing, but it's easier to stay on the mind and make that connection while you are playing because that person can now, oh, you're an athlete? Okay, I get to watch you on Saturday. And so same thing we tell our NFL guys. Like you, your value as a NFL player is greater when you are not. You can say, hey, yeah, I'm, you know, so-and-so. I'm in the off season. I'm training, but I want to come and shadow you or I want to partner with you or whatever it may be. I want to invest. Um, and so we talked to our guys about that, like, but we, we, we attack our programming through the NFL. We're going to like, uh, we're going to do some stuff, some networking stuff, but we'll do it through the NFL. So we'll talk to our players that played in the NFL. I'm, I plan on having an NFL panel where guys who played, who went to school here, played in the NFL, but have successful businesses, um, come talk to our guys. We have a, uh, uh, he played tight end here, played in the NFL. Uh, was a big time high school recruit, played in the NFL, and he had an injury, like a, a freak finger in injury. Like, because mm. we think a lot of people think concussion, a lot of people think knees, but he had a finger for his position playing, I believe, tight end. You like, he needs that. Uh, and so his career was cut short, but now he's a successful financial guy in the area. So having that, but once again, bringing NFL, getting them in because the NFL t- t- uh, t- uh, tickles their ears. So we're going to use whatever, like, um, it's like, you know, in college, when you go to something, if you want people to come, you better have free food, you know? Yeah, you got to. I would say I went to have free food, you know? Like, this group, this student group had free food, you know? This whatever, free food, free shirts, you know? You know, it's, I mean, the credit card companies use it every single year uh, with college students. They get everybody's information for a free shirt. So it's like, there's got to be some um, some bait on the hook. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and, and I mean, I think, that's just an amazing level of awareness that you have just understanding that the NFL tickle tickles the guy's ears. So I'm, I'm not going to try to bring that. I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel and do something totally different over here and right. go through loops and hoops and everything else. 
but I'm just going to go right here. This, this is the path of least resistance right here. They're going to get the same information and they're going to hear, they're going to receive it. And I'd probably say they would, they would be more, more aware or more locked into it because like you said, it's, it's the NFL. Right. Now you get, you get a situation where they're sitting there looking at a fifth, you look at a fifth, okay, you're in a team room, you're looking at a fifth round contract and then cats start talking about bonuses. Well, you get bonuses at jobs too. What, what happens to us, you know, um, I can't think of the words right now. Daggummit. Incentive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if he gets uh, four interceptions, okay, well, if you're the top seller at your company, you know, you get a Christmas ball. Like, and so mm -hmm. now we're talking about extra money. We're talking like, and so we're going to, every, every question they, they honestly are going to ask is going to deal with something that we can handle as far as just overall finances go. You know, what, what you sign a contract, you have a signing bonus. People get signing bonuses in the real world. You know, what does it look like? How much do I have to put it? Like Uncle Sam, taxes, you're going to get taxed. Like, so it gives us the opportunity to uh, talk about all that. Man, man. So, Co so Coach Jones, we're about to get ready to dive into the two-minute drill, but I want to I wanna ask yeah. you this question. I want to ask mm -hmm. you this question before, before we go there, because I know you can handle a two-minute drill. I'm not really worried <laughs> about that. But, yeah. but the, question, the question I have for you is what would you, just where you are in the position that you are, the experiences that you've had, the mentors that you had and have, what would you tell what would you tell your 18 year old self and i'm saying 18 just because i think that's like right around the age where you'd be starting college ish um so i actually we we had this conversation uh this week i was sharing this with people i don't even think my mom knows this so mom if you hear this i'm sorry um my 18 year old self i i actually invented something that was worth a quarter million dollars and somebody a company was like hey um we'll pay you a quarter million dollars for it. i was like i want royalties and they were like, no, it doesn't work like that. I was like, it does work like that. So I would tell my 18-year-old self that the money today is uh, a lot longer than the money tomorrow and to take the deal. No, but uh, my 18-year-old self, I would say, um, so I've got back into, I think, the aspect of putting things down, writing, typing, um, and just connecting with people that, you think are on the path that you're on. I think I'm yeah. thankful where I, I'm at. I've had doors open for me that I did not take advantage of. Um, I knew I wanted to work in sports. So at 18, I should have been full go. Sending letters is before email kind of like really got big, but sending letters to the Texans, sending letters to the Rockets, sending letters to, you know, whoever it may be. Um, U of H, you know, getting my freshman year, AD, can I, can I sit down with you? Can you tell me what you, your, what you do? I did a lot of that towards the end, but I think my 18 year old self, I would have said, step out the box, get uncomfortable. A no is a two letter, one syllable word. No, that's it. That's what I told my, that's what I would tell my 18 year old self. It's a, it's a two letter, one syllable word. No, get out the box, push the envelope, push it, push it. Every idea you think of, try and see how you can capitalize on it, push it, push it. All they can say is no. Mm. Man, that's good, Coach Jones. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, about, did you really come up with something else worth a quarter million dollars? Oh, yeah. Like, legit. Legit. I it was a dog feeder. My oh. cousin missed my aunt's um, retirement party because he had to feed the dog. And I was like, ah, like, there's nothing to feed dogs. I literally, at the, you know, and I got a nice little eat lunch. But at, at the uh, deal, I just drew it, drew it up. Put in my pocket, went home that day or the next day. They had like invent help came on. I called the number. They sent me a packet. I sent it to them. They called me within a week and said, "This is brilliant. I will pay you a quarter million dollars for it." And I was just, I, I should have consulted. I would also my eighteen year old self consult with your parents. Uh, <laughs> I was like, man, look, I'm trying to get this money on the side. Like you know what I'm saying? I was kind of just like, Ooh. I didn't want nobody to know I was about to get a quarter million dollars. Uh, but yeah, that that didn't work out the way I should have. Um, ended up spending money toward later in my life. I tried to rebring it back, but I was actually, I had an opportunity to beat the market and really honestly make a market. Mm. Um, and I just kind of, sometimes I, I regret it. But sometimes I always wonder, like for me, I, I'm if I take that, am I in this seat right now? Mm. You know, how different would my life be? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like just, you, you just don't know, man. I'm 18 years old, quarter million dollars. Man, I could have went crazy, man. Who knows? I could have got caught up in the money. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could be in jail. Like, it's so many deals. I'm just like, you know what? I know now, but I I'm thankful to be here. And 
who knows, man? They might have took my deal and gave me no money. So mm. nobody made money off of that. So. <laughs> man, yeah, yeah. Wow. I still haven't told my mom. I'm gonna tell her at some point. I just don't wanna. You might as well just 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 all you gotta do is send her the link to the episode. And <laughs> I don't, I, maybe I told. I just I never told my parents. I just. <laughs> I'm disappointed myself. I went to college and forgot about it for like three years until I was talking to somebody about it. And I was like, oh yeah, let me retry, try and do this again. Because so, you buried it after, because after you knew, you knew how much it was worth and you were like, hmm, you just, you just hid it from your own mind. Man, I wish, you know, 18 year olds could read a book about negotiation because I would have said, you know what? 750, I ain't, and y'all can have it. I don't care how much money I'll make off. Give me 750. Mm. But <laughs> Man, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. But Coach Jones, all right, I want to, I want to pull you off memory lane real quick. Pull you off memory lane, and right. we're gonna slide into the, we're gonna slide into the two minute drill. Here we go. And, and like I told you before, the two minute drill is gonna. I just have a few rapid fire questions I want to ask you, and you know, just give the people a chance just to see like another side of you, have a little bit of fun, and then we'll wrap this thing up, and I'll let you be on your way and can go get ready to to head home. And like you said, y'all y'all are playing man 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 to man defense. Yeah, two little, two beautiful girls playing man and man to man defense. Oh man, there it goes. So, are you ready for the two minute drill, coach? Here we go. Here we go. Chin straps buckle. Let's go. There we go. And here it is. Favorite food? Asian. What 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 dish? Rice. Okay, okay. Uh, book you're currently reading? Uh, Build a story brand. Donald Miller. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's your favorite go to Netflix show? Parks and Rec. Mm, mm -hmm. All time favorite movie? Lion King, original. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what's, what's your favorite podcast? The best one I listen to, uh, Craig Rochelle Leadership Podcast. I listen to that thing like religiously. Craig is good. Craig is good. Now, what, what's, you can take your time on this one. What's one tip that you want to leave with a student athlete? Not only dream big, but speak big. Mm. Talk heavy then, Coach Jones. Yeah. yeah. Come Talk off the top rope with your dreams. Off the top rope. Boom, <laughs> with the dreams. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. I love it. And then who, who is the next person that you would like to see me bring on to Beyond the Ball? Lauren Hawkins, my intern. She's, a, she's a phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Okay, okay. Me and Lauren are overdue to connect because we said yeah. we were going to, but it didn't happen. But I know a lot of stuff been happening. But Coach, Coach Jones, let people know where, where they can follow you and how they can connect with you and just, you know, continue to find out about the great things that, that, that you all are doing over at Kansas Jayhawk awesome. Nation. Yeah, Twitter, uh, at Ed underscore Jones 2. Instagram, at Ed underscore Jones 2. And actually, I have a reading... Um, page on Instagram. It's at red by Ed. Maybe some underscores under there. I can't remember, but it's red by Ed. Gotcha. I'll make sure I, make sure I get it all down in the show notes. And I, I wanted to tell you, I, I definitely can appreciate the page just because, you know, you you showing people what you're reading and especially coach, if you know it or not, you're, you're, you are influential. I, I think you're influential uh, just in regards to, you know, developing leaders, not just student athletes, but, but leaders. So, and, you know, people always want to know, like, what are leaders listening to? What are leaders reading? And what are you doing to develop yourself and all this other stuff? So one, I want to just commend you on, on that, because if you're a leader and you're not developing yourself, then are you really leading? But, you know, you with reading and the podcast. So coach, you, you all are, you all are doing great work. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I, and coming up, coming up on Red by Ed, 14 steps to success. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. I'm, I went from weekly to two a month until so I could get time because it's like I'll be wanting to like some of my red. I kind of want to get back and get some of that good stuff out of it. So this one will probably be next Sunday. And then after that, we're going to boom. The man himself, Jonathan Jones, will be up. Will be up. Okay, there it is. Coach Jones, well, I, I appreciate you take, taking the time, man, hang, hanging, out with, hanging out with us today. No problem. Yes, sir. Everybody out there listening, I would encourage you to share this episode with, with one friend, one student athlete, one young professional, because Coach Jones did drop some gems. Coach, you, 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 came, you came off the ropes. You came off the ropes for sure. Top is still cage. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh man, everybody make make sure make sure like I said to share this with with one friend and be sure to give Coach Jones a follow. Let him know you heard the podcast and let him know one thing that added value to you this episode. I'm Jonathan Jones and this is Beyond the Ball where we help you succeed beyond your degree. Thank <laughs> you.